This is it, the 8K okay, so surf. This is from stock. This is from stock right on. Everybody hang on. So we got These are Akuma 8K Monsters. These are uh, line layering monsters that just broke a recent world record here in the U.S. And to me, these are the biggest spinners out there for long distance uh, spin casting. How big is the Surf 8K? Wow, check it out against the Makaira, the Makaira 10,000. To me, they're roughly the same size. That tells you how big these are. These are now. If the spool was fully extended on the uh, AKs, it'll actually be bigger than the Makaira. Wow! Look at all that line. Had a local tackle shop put this on for me at the time because I didn't have my own spooler. Now I do. So it's been a while since I changed the line, and I noticed a lot of the line was chafed halfway down from a lot of the big runs I had. So it was about time. Big, big ass reel, but. Wow, you're kidding. They didn't put any tape backing. They just tied it in. Wow. Oh, God, that's a lot of line. Guess I'm going to go up to Haleiwa this afternoon, do some whippings. I have I can drop that off in the receptacle bin. Oh, my God. This one was tied off, too? Jeez, no tape backing whatsoever. Ah. Okay, you got to remember, this is not a stainless steel spool here. So you do have to clean it once in a while. Now's a good time. Use a little silicone. Okay, look at that difference. The one on the right, I just cleaned. It only took less than a minute. Look at that, beautiful. And it's gonna keep uh, the rust and the corrosion away. The one on the left, I haven't done yet. Y you can see the difference. Aren't they beautiful? Now I'm ready to spool line on. Also, I'd like to show that on uh, the inside here of the spool, the bottom part is larger diameter, the top part is smaller. So what I tend to do is I, I make my uni knot um, right on the top part because when you put pressure on it, you put pressure on the line, it starts to tighten up, it's going to slide to whatever is going to be the, uh, the smaller diameter, which should be the top part of this one. And for you observant ones out there, you, as you notice, I'm just going through the... Um, the rubberized handle of my scissors because I don't have a uh, barber feeder. Well, it's actually built in, but when it's fully extended out, won't go directly past where I started from. So I prefer to use something more manual. Okay, when I stripped the line, I was using braid backing to um, about one third mono top shots. Yeah, I just decided I'm gonna, on this one here, I'm gonna go 80 pound braid straight. Reason being is because with one arm, I can break 80 pound braid. That, that's that's kind of like my limitation. Um, I can go 100 and I can use two hands and I can break that uh, in case something gets hung up. But that's about the max I would go. So what we got here, let me see now. We're using 80 pound um, eminent steel braid. And we got, it says 752. So um, that means because it's backwards, that's 248 meters. So you go 248 times one meter which is 3.28 feet and that will give you how many feet we just put on so we got 813 feet straight braid 80 pound um let's see what we're going to do on the other one okay next i'm going to go straight 30 pound mono so it's going to take uh less it's going to take a little less line than the braid even though it's 80 pound braid is the diameter of the line but this is what i'm choosing oh 
sorry, don't know how many yards we got with the mono because the uh, the line counter was ticking, so I had to take it off just to finish this. But I got the, the braid and the mono done. The reason I went braid on uh, this one is for areas that no, no coral, it's going to be flat reef and sand. Um, one like this is going to, I don't go in areas of high reef, but um, this will, um, I can use the mono areas where the, it will have ledges and all that. So it's going to um, help abrade any possible line cuts. So that's why I went with these two. So now I'm going to um, clean the, the housing units. And one thing I noticed that uh, these have here, um, the AKs, they have the brushes. They have one on this side, one on the other side. And what's good about the brushes, it helps um, when this is spinning, it helps keep the water out and it also helps keep the salt out. So um, that's one of the side benefits of this type of reel. It's a long distance reel. Look how long it takes for, see the, the center stem to go up and down, up and down. It's because it's packing the line on tight, which means that you're gonna get less um, line friction when tossing. So you can get more distance because of that. And you can put more, pack more line on the spool and you get more lineage. Look how slow it just goes up and down, up and down. Both bodies all done. Look how beautiful they shine. And, and all the, the beginning of tarnishing was all wiped off. You can see everything looks good again. So it's good when, you, when your equipment's down for a while or you, you know you haven't used it for a while just to clean it up a bit. Everything is sprayed down, everything wiped off. Lines change, everything's been clean. Now, when you, if you, if even if you're not using it to store it or just have it laying around and see it, it's a little bit on the tight side, loosen it up. That's what you want. You never want to store these things tight. Slow oscillation, right on.